So uh, welcome, everyone. Thank you for coming. Um, we're going to start the presentation part of our, um, of our forum tonight, but we're waiting for our fourth member before we can really conduct uh, a meeting. But we can do the presentation, and we can gather feedback. Um, so um, I'm Amy Ritterbush. I'm the chair of the Historic District Commission. This is Beth, Beth, Beth Kelly, Kelly, the vice chair. Long-time member. Yeah, and resident of the district. Right. And Mike Allen. And Mike's on as our realtor rep. We also have an architect on the committee, Jeanette Thompson. We're required to have an architect. And we have Marianne Chambers, who's the rep from the Historical uh, Society. Uh, we're required to have a recommendation from the Historical Society. And then we have two more at-large members. Is that right? Mm -hmm. um, I'm losing my train of thought. Who are we missing? Beth Watson and um, Mel oh, Melanie Smith. No. Yeah. Right. Okay. So we really appreciate all the feedback we've gotten so far. We're really at the beginning of a process here. And um, we can make lots of changes. Um, we could. Uh, we could slow down, we could stop, we could um, continue, but it really helps hearing directly from people and particularly very specific feedback about areas of town who want to be included in it versus who don't want to be included in it. I've tried to start compiling a list here of people who have told me either in person or filled out the survey that they did, did or didn't want to be in the district so we kind of have an idea where we stand. And we're also compiling a list of, um, of uh, changes that people might want to make, like uh, more things that they want to be exempt from review, uh, maybe lessening some of the restrictions on newer homes that would be, could be potentially in the district. So let's see. Um, and this is our last forum, and then we're going to kind of try to decide um, soon, like, what our next steps are, whether we are going to completely stop, whether we're going to continue as proposed, or if we're going to slow down and, and do some more work and maybe wait another year or, and make some changes. So um, as you make your comments, it would be really helpful if you kind of said specifically whether you do or don't want your house in the district, whether you want certain changes to it, um, or, um, or other things, and you know what, what your concerns are, and we really appreciate hearing from you. So let's see, just an overview. We only review um, exterior architectural features visible from a public way in the district. We do review the color of paint, but only if it's a new color or, or not white. Um, we don't review interior design changes, routine maintenance, Temporary signs, blocks, driveways, and sidewalks, storm windows or doors, screen doors, antennas, and window air conditioners, and things that are not visible from the street. And I wanted to explain a little bit about the difference between the Historical Commission and the Historic District Commission. So the Historical Commission reviews demolition permits on buildings and structures that are more than 75 years old in all areas of town, uh, or, or if they have some historical significance but are newer. Uh, they don't review and do any design review of exterior changes, and and mainly what they can do is determine that a building is preferably pr preserved, and then they can impose a six-month demolition delay, and then after that, the building can be demolished. And then there's no design review of new structures built after a demolition of a historic structure. The historic district, which is just right now 25 properties in the downtown, we provide design review for exterior changes, um, and we can either grant or deny a certificate of appropriateness, a certificate of non-applicability. This is usually when you're replacing something with something almost identical, like gutters, um, or a certificate of hardship, where somebody, um, in order to, to mean, in order to um, preserve the house, they have to do something that's not really historically appropriate, but it's necessary, like adding a fire escape, or maybe the person just can't afford um, to paint it anymore. And they need to add vinyl siding or something like that. And our decisions don't expire after six months, like the decisions of the historical commission. <coughs> but somebody could always reapply. Let's see. And put that on the screen there. Um, this is our little bit about of our current our current process. You can apply online with online or in a paper form, and there's no fees to the property owner. After we receive an application, uh, we have to meet within 14 days to decide whether it falls under our jurisdiction and whether we need to hold a public hearing. Uh, for larger projects like the library or the fountain restoration, we did hold public hearings and had to notify the about, uh, adjoining property owners. For smaller things, like we just reviewed the Muffin House Cafe sign, we didn't feel like that needed a public hearing, so we were just able to do that really quickly. Um, and then if we don't meet within the 14 days or we don't make a decision within 60 days, um, then it's automatically approved. Let's see. That's our process. And this is a little bit more about the types of certificates uh, that I already talked about. 
And then there's just some studies on the impact on property values. Uh, in general, property values hold their own or are valued, uh, properties in historic districts are valued higher or hold their own than other uh, similar properties that are not in the historic district. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. I know you had mentioned that before in another meeting. Can you tell me where you got that data? They're right here um, in the slideshow here. So there's a Forbes article from August. Um, there's a st Connecticut study in 2011. There's a New York City study. I called the realtor around then and they couldn't substantiate that. They also called an insurance company too. Um, but I was just wondering what you based on. We originally got it from the Mass Historical Commission and then I looked up a, you know, specific studies. <coughs> Thank you. Um, there are some grants available from CPC and the Mass Historical Commission. I'm sorry, if, um, if people are going to make comments, can we have them go up to the microphone up there just so we can capture it okay. for public comments? Yep, good reminder. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, is there anything else we should add before we begin? No. Okay. So if you'd like to have a, ask a question or make a comment, you need to come to the mic and state your name and address. And, um, yep. Ted Mayer and 56 Hayden Rose Street. I was always under the impression you guys, the, that your the historical district that you show here in the green color was far greater than that because I've known people that have done some work on their homes and had to kowtow to, to um, the commission. Now, so like, for example, on, Hay on Grove Street, there's been three houses done recently. Yeah. yeah. They had to go in front of the historic commission, the not the historic historical. district. Historical, historical commission. commission. That's the historical. Yeah. Right. And that's what you were talking about a little while ago. Right. right. And one has greater uh, um, authority or greater, or, um, more teeth to the bylaw, I guess yeah. you could say. All right. And they had to go because they were 75 years old, didn't they? Correct. Isn't Correct. Isn't that the criteria? Yes. Yep. And they were tearing it down. Right. And they wanted a demolition permit. Yeah. So no more questions or comments? Yeah, of course. Okay. <laughs> Hi, Jim Callery, Maple Street. Amy, what's the impetus for this? Where is this coming from? Is this something that came out of the historic or historical commission, whichever the historic commission? I'm wondering why now, what's the reason? Is there a and my second question, I guess, is what's in it for me? Because in reading this, it's it's <clears throat> It's going to prevent my neighbor from doing something to me rather than protect me from what I can do or, or enable me to improve my own property. So not to confuse, but where, where, why now, you know, what's the impetus and then the what's in it for me question. So it kind of it came about through discussions with the Historical Commission, which is the other commission, that um, when anyone, typically when someone wants to demolish an historic property, the neighbors are very upset that they can't do, really do anything about it except come complain about it. So they suggested um, applying for a grant to research the properties in the downtown near the current historic district, which was done through CPC funding and a Mass Historical Commission grant um, a couple of years ago, and it's now complete, to study the properties to consider an expansion. And then part of considering an expansion is getting feedback from, from residents, because we don't have to go forward if that's not what people want. So let's see. So the benefits of being, I know you have a newer home, so the benefits of being in it, in it, I guess, are that you maintain the streetscape um, and that it, right, it prevents the neighboring property owners or, you know, from a developer from like buying all the houses and tearing them all down and building something that's different. And people may or may not care about that. I think that's <coughs> right. I know. Right. <clears throat> Another question. What would be the appeal process if, if the Historic Commission decided that's you know that's not appropriate for your neighborhood or whatever. Is there an appeal process? Yep, there's always an appeal process. And that's what I'm afraid of, right? Yeah. There's always been you know there's been recent activity in my neighborhood and there's been appeal processes regardless of what the neighbors think, uh, regardless of what the neighborhood wants. So there's always a way around it, right? The historic. So a big property owner. My fear is a big property could come over, come come in, and work around the appeals process, right? Work it out because, you know, they know town government better than, you know, the average person. So 
this is going to be something that has sharp teeth for the person that doesn't know how to get around it mm -hmm. um, and no teeth for the, for the developer that knows how to get around it. Well, it's, it's kind of hard to get around it, and I'll give you the example of the library. The, how about, com uh, not commercial properties, how about residential? That's, that's really what I'm worried about. But the library is a better example from the standpoint that they, they did some things like the, the front walkways were brick and they didn't get approval. So they had to come back in front of us because we asked them to and, and change it. And now they're putting stone faced on the bricks. Okay. So you can't, it's hard to get around this board. How about the monstrosity at Kidsboro? They got around that, right? They're putting condos in there now. Different, well, a, total, a total different, it's not a historic commission. That's I understand. not in the district. Right now. Kidsboro, what did I say? Yeah. yeah. What, what I'm saying is people that, what I'm saying is people can come in, developers can come in, hire the right people, and get around the bylaws. They can file for appeals, and they know how to do it. Right. But the folks sitting in here that just want to put a different colored door on their, on their house are going to be beholden by a couple of people up here that don't like the color. So I should say, um, the kid, building where Kidsboro is is not in the historic district. Nope, it's, it's got nothing to right, do with historic yeah. district. My, my point is, people right. know how to get around the bylaws. You sure. file for... Um, a non conform you know, you file for a non conformance approval, right? right? There's just yeah. people, you know, so that, that's my fear. Eat. So, how, how is this helping me with my property? It's not, it's helping me prevent my neighbor from doing something to his, right? Because if a big temp developer comes in and buys all the homes, they're gonna figure out how to get around it, anyways, because. It's just the but way it goes. The point. They it's can just get a around. Bar. They can get yeah. around zoning as it currently occurs. But if it's in the district, they can't. They have to go through us. They can appeal. Elaine told me they can appeal to the Metropolitan Area Planning Committee, which is our regional right. planning agency, if they want. Which I don't think anybody since I've been on the board has done. Not to my knowledge, but right. I don't, not since I've been on the board. Uh, just to kind of clarify something, and I live in the historic district and have for forty years. The Historic District Commission, this group, is a legal zoning entity. The enforcer is the building inspector. So the Historical Society does have, really has no way of enforcing things, but this committee does. And I will say that over the years, and I've been on this committee for 20 years, uh, the reason it's composed of an architect, a resident, um, a real estate person, um, is that we're here to protect the people that live in the district. We are for you. <laughs> we are not against you. And, and over, I know it's been brought up like, oh, if this committee changes, you know, maybe it would be you know, a little more strict or a little more lenient. Yes, but there are seven people on this committee, and we're all from different walks of life. We're all volunteers. We're all interested in Hopkinton. And um, I think that what's happened in the current historic district, there has only been one time in, since 1976 that there has been any sort of, um, uh, confrontation, I would call it. And it was with the building that the um, Thai restaurant now occupies. And uh, the owner wanted to put a second story on. And he, he wanted to do things without coming to this committee. As it turned out, we worked with him and his architect. And I think we got the best possible. They were happy. Everybody around was happy. and. You know, we, things have changed. Number one, Ash Street um, has changed color. Um, they've come to this committee and they asked our advice. What do, you, what do you think we ought to paint this building? And Jeanette Thompson was great. She, she surveyed the, the surrounding buildings, the stone building. Stone House had a reddish roof, so she suggested um, the color of the doorway and the shutters coordinate with that. And number one, Ash Street, the BA8, they were extremely happy. 
with how things turned out. So I just want to allay any fears that we're here for the people that own properties in the historic district. Yeah, and I don't doubt your sincerity at all. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the, the Zoning Board of Appeals is a legal entity too, right? And they had a legion of neighbors come in and tell them why that's a bad idea. And they said, yeah, well, we're just going to do it anyways. But that person that had their house changed colors, well, they could have done that anyways. They didn't need to come to a historical committee to get those recommendations. They could have gone to an architect and done that. That's their decision to do. That's my point. Thank you. <clears throat> Well, I will say that, uh, you know, there are, there is opening for conversation. It's not like, you know, our way or the highway, that's for sure. And over the years, you know, we've had lots of conversations with people. And the thing is, we're just trying to, um, the word protect, really, what's, what we still have in Hopkinton. Because if you look at some other towns, you know, they have really, uh, where they haven't had historic districts, like their whole common has turned commercial with ugly buildings and brick fronts on former beautiful homes. And so we want to try and keep some semblance of what we have. We know that Hopkinton is not the most beautiful town. Uh, it's not Concord. It's not Nantucket. But we're hoping through dialogue with people that we can kind of preserve some sort of an atmosphere um, that is conducive to, you know, families of the affordable houses, the smaller houses, try and keep those so young people can, you know, move in and contribute to the town. So I kind of, I, my main point is that we really are here for you. And we're volunteers, and we're always looking for, you know, for one reason or another, a committee member can't serve anymore. So, you know, we want people to join this committee when there are openings. So I think that, uh, you know, the ma my main point is we're really here for Hopkinton and for you. I just have a comment. Um, my name's Alice Carroll, and I do live in the proposed historic area. Um, however, I have uh, land immediately abutting my property that's not in the historic area, and there is a developer that is proposing to put in an eight-unit apartment building there. Um, uh, the neighbors are very concerned about that, and we've been very outspoken about that. My question is, how does something like that, is there any protection for me if this went through in the future? Um, in terms of restrictions for that apartment building, its appearance, and how it will present in the neighborhood. How is that protecting me being in the historic district? Well, unfortunately, I, I don't know if, if they could put a building that fit the neighborhood. We can't control whether it's eight units or four units or two units. But, or any units. Right, but we could, we could kind of work with them to try to figure out how to make it fit into the neighborhood. But the zoning board, would determine whether they can put an eight. Okay, so unit. I think that was another question I had, is in terms of this commission, is there any dialogue between you and the zoning, the zoning board or the planning board? Is there, do you have any impact on influencing no. those decisions? No, I don't think so. Uh, I don't, yeah, I don't think so either. Um, we could prevent the demolition of, uh, this is a situation where they want to demolish the building, right? Uh, they want to demolish the building and build what they're calling a colonial <clears throat> house. So if that, but, but if that building were in the district, we could prevent it being demolished and work with them to build, maybe put an addition on it or something like that instead. The, but they still would have to meet the zoning requirements right. or go to Zoning Board of but, Appeals. But once the, we're only responsible, or we only have purview over the shell that you can see from the street. So how they carve up the inside of it, we, we have no say. And I'd just like to comment, there's clearly a lot of nuances here that I'm not familiar with and I'm new to this meeting, so I can't comment on any of those. But in theory, I would just like to say that I, I support the idea of protecting the town um, and trying to maintain what um, rural, if that's, if that's the correct word, um, idea of the town that there is. I think there's a lot of development. Personally, I feel like it's encroaching all around us and I think we need to protect it from that. It isn't just me and my, my 
future of butters, but I think it's, it's if you look at all of the other issues that if you read about in the local paper that have come up recently with the solar um, farm that was just voted down and with the issues going on at Chamberlain Street, I think there's, without some restrictions and without some pushback, I think this town could turn into a very different place, and that concerns me. Thank you. Thank you. One other thing I might add is um, when the historic district was first uh, started, uh, not all the buildings that are in it now were in it. The center school was added to it one year, the town hall another year. Now, actually, if you think about it, now that center school is not functioning as a school anymore, the town owns it, and we're, we're still not sure what the deposition of it is going to be. However, they, the committee studying center school has done extensive um, open forums, meetings, what have you, and uh, it looks like the town wants to keep the building, so they don't want to sell it. But if you think about this, center school has 10 acres of land with it. If the town decided, if, it, if center school was not in the historic district, and we're just talking about the front part that was built in 1929, um, some developer could offer the town a ton of money, knock down center school, and put a ton of condos in there, and then what would we have in downtown Hopkinton? I'm not sure it, was, it would be the thing that you would want you know, when you're having poly arts and the marathon and the things on the common, I think that um, having center school in the historic district is a big plus for the town. Now, I'm not saying, you know, how they're going to use the property. They might want to knock down part of it that's not useful anymore. But uh, so there is something to historic preservation that uh, is helpful in keeping a certain um, ambiance about a town. It's, you know, it seems like it's another government layer telling you what to do with your own property. But I will say that it is in a way, but it's, you know, be clear, it's not, it's not telling you um, that you can't change the whole inside of your house. All we care about is what it looks like from the public way. That's a very uh, specific phrase. And it, if you want to change the color of your house or so, then you come to us. But if you just want to repaint it, uh, you know, want to do some new landscaping, you don't come to us. Landscaping is not in our purview. So it kind of mainly has to do with the color and uh, if you were going to add something that would be seen from the public way, you know, you would come to us and we'd try to work out with you and your architect or just with you, you know, maybe the best plan. You know, and we'd, we'd try to come to an agreement because we always have. That's been this committee's um, purview, really, to work with the people. We're from Hopkinton and uh, we want the best. <laughs> I'm Shane Levy, Maple Street. Um, I have a question. Could you give us an example of where, in the current historic district, you've been able to you know, save a protected building, or how did that work, and how did the how did the process work? Not just the commercial. I know you mentioned the uh, the Thai restaurant, but an actual house in the current district. Let's see. So uh, can, the library oh. is the best. But you want well, to I just think more of a house. I'm more, I'm more interested in a house. Let's say someone builds, knocks down a house in our neighborhood and decides to build some colossal 10,000 square feet house. I mean, not yeah. to say it couldn't happen, but how would, how is that, has that happened it's to a, date or how the how that process work? It has not happened to my knowledge in the current district. We've been, this district has been in existence since 1979. So, yeah, so there's not... It's very small. If you take yeah. out the, the, the big commercial chunks, there's there's not a lot of actual homes in it. So how would it work then, if, if that's the case? So I think we'd have to determine if it, if it was so far gone that it really did need to be demolished, or if there was a way to save it, but then do like an addition on the back or shore it up. Uh, I mean, things, 
I think I we would look for, it's hard to speak without seeing the exact property, would be that it meets this, the streets, it matches the streetscape, that a similar setback, um, a similar sort of facade to the other houses on the street or the house that was there previously, but that maybe it would have an addition in the back or an addition that was a little bit taller in the back so that it could still have the modern amenities that people wanted. Yeah, I mean, one of the things we're trying to do in addition to examine whether a district should be expanded is to really uh, hone the design criteria that we want to be able to deal with and make it public so you people know you know, what things we're looking for, what things, you know, which way we're going to go with certain things. So it's not like you're sitting there saying, uh, I don't want to go in front of these people because I have no idea what they're going to say. Um, so this board in particular, we're working hard to try to come up with a set of published guidelines so we can better communicate with the public. And, and to date, we don't. We don't have a lot of... We, we talk about certain things that we don't rule on, but generally, you know, we have to look at anything that people bring to us. But if we come back with guidelines saying, if you're doing this, this, and this, you have to come see us. If you're doing this, this, and this, you don't, then everybody's clear. So that's one of the things we're trying to do currently. So hopefully that'll help. And I think we did all say at the last meeting that we wouldn't bring this to town meeting until we had written published guidelines and I had a, a hearing right. on those. Right. I think that makes sense. Thank you. You want? Hi, uh, Peter Burnham, 64 Hayden Row. A um, couple questions. How did you come up with this plan? You started out with maybe 29, 30 homes, or not even all homes, and now you're trying to increase by like fourfold. It's, this is a huge amount that you're trying to put into your new district. And then I'm looking on like Main Street. You don't go any, anywhere this way, where there's multiple historical homes this way, but nothing goes past Main Street. Well, not Main Street, I should Grove, say Rose Street. Grove, yeah. Up this way. So how did you come up with, how did you come up with this plan? To, so, to come all the way up Hayden Row, all the way to the high school? So in a variety of ways, so we had a, there was a consultant that reviewed the district and surrounding area in 1989 who recommended it. Rec and also we had a consultant in 2016-17. And they both recommended expanding around the current district. So that's, that's where we started from. And then we also did a, a site walk um, last spring where we walked around and looked at the ABC Street area. We've talked to the Historical Commission about where they're seeing the most demolitions. And then we actually did have someone come to our meeting um, a couple maybe it was two months ago, and we were actually not going to go as far up Hayden Road, but they recommended that we try to go all the way to the corner. And well, so it was resident it feedback. It almost seemed, to me, it almost like, well, you know what we're going to do is we're going to give them a plan that's this big and hopefully we'll get this much. I mean, is, is there like an well, underlying like, so way to, you know what I mean? So we're the historic district commission. We, we love historic districts. We love historic homes. Oh, and we wanted, to, we wanted to try to make it big, but we understand it may not be what people want. So... Well, what we want, didn't want to do, it, it's kind of converse to what you said. We didn't want to start with, say, A, B, and C in Walcott, and then two years from now say, oh, well, maybe we should expand again, or maybe we should expand again. So we kind of wanted to take a grab of, you know, a bigger piece of it, and then say, what does this group of neighbors think? And if they don't want it, then we know we're not going to expand. If, if we find out that maybe A, B, and C likes it, but Grove and... Maple don't, then maybe we just go towards A, B, and C. It really. Yeah, that's what I mean. Here, so you. Well, you give it, up the it, well, it wasn't. It wasn't because we were trying to just, you know, grab. We just wanted to get a big picture of what people wanted, and then figure out what what to do based on what people want. If people don't want this, we're not going to do it. I'm back. I know. Jeannie Markman on 66 Hayden Road. So I walked the streets of Hopkinton, okay, and I got lots of signatures about people who don't want this to happen. Okay. And I'm happy to give this to you. Okay. Um, in the process of walking the streets of Hopkinton, I was invited in, okay, I was talked to, trying to explain this. So the end goal, on, or I should say the Thing that I came out with was a lot of people don't know okay what's going on here okay and so 
I think you can't make a decision until you know that 100% of the people that this is affecting is clear and aware of what this means, okay? Um, the second thing is, um, for me, you know, you all know that I don't want this to happen. Um, I don't want to have to take additional steps. My um, taste, okay, I think is very good, okay? And it may vary very much from your taste, okay? So who wins, all right? And so I don't like that combination of things, okay? I am very outspoken. Okay, much to fault. Okay, and without saying this, but saying it is there's a lot of people that don't necessarily always like me. Okay, so when I have to come to you to paint my door pink, okay, and we get into it, okay, who gets the last say? It's human nature to avoid that what you do, what you don't like. Okay, so are you going to make it hard for me? All right, it may sound silly. But that's reality, okay? Um, the other thing is, you know, you talk about hardships. Who decides that, okay? Do I disclose my financial situations to you? I doubt it, okay? But who gets to decide who has a hardship and who doesn't, all right? Um, the other thing for me is I've lived in my house for 18 years. My husband's family lived in it for 30 plus years after that. Okay, if this goes to town meeting, I have somebody on the other side of town who's lived in town for two years, okay, and enjoys their nice strolls, okay, through downtown. And they get to decide about my house. It's wrong. I agree with you. Okay, so um, we talked about, you know, the new families coming in, the young families. Um, and such, you know, first home, they can afford to get into Hopkinton, all great, okay? But do they fully understand when they're looking at a home, to buy a home, okay, that to make their dream come true, they're gonna have to jump through hoops, okay? And I say jump through hoops just because that's how I see it, all right? But, you know, so that's misleading, all right? The survey that you, the survey that you sent out, is misleading too, okay? Do you want a historic district in the town of Hopkinton? Sure, okay, do you wanna preserve it? I think the question was. Sure, we wanna preserve it, okay? Do you want to, let me just find it so that I'm not. <laughs> do you think the center of town um, of Hopkinton is historically significant? Yes. Okay, the center of town. I'm not the center of town. I'm three blocks from the center of town. So I can't really answer that question. Okay, do you think the center of Hopkinton should be preserved? Yes, but I'm not the center of Hopkinton. Okay, are you concerned about recent, recent demolitions and changes to your neighborhood or what could be lost in the future? Well, yes, but I haven't seen any demolitions that have resulted in something that looks awful. Okay, the, the things that I do know, the two houses on Grove Street and then the, on the right-hand side, if you're going down Grove Street, and then the one on the left side, okay, all are beautiful. I agree. Okay, and yes, one of them may be a little bit bigger than um, the, the, neighbors. the plot, okay, right. but it's beautiful. All right, and they, they did an exceptional job. Um, what, what kind of projects should be exempt from review? <laughs> All projects should be exempt from review. All right, it's, it's my house, okay? I will preserve it, okay? I, you, I, I, I get the whole thing that, you know, we want to stop developers from coming in and, and tearing down you know, three houses in a row and building a big to-do, okay? You know what? If, if they want to build a big to-do, I'm sure they're not going to be building a Lego house or a modular spaceship or whatever, okay? <laughs> I think that it would be tasteful. Um, do, overall, do I 
support the concept of expanding Hopton can, um, Center Historic District to include your street? No. Um, but everybody I talked to, okay, didn't know what that meant. So again, I'm back to the, the concept of everybody, okay, like you should go to everybody's house, okay, that's involved with this and talk to them, okay, because that's the only way you're going to be 100% sure, okay, of what's going on here. Um, I think that's, should I go any further? I don't need Can you please share those with us? Can you please share what? Those. The survey? I mean the... No, the signatures. Oh, sure. You don't have to do it tonight, but okay. just at some point. Yeah. All right, so for now, I think I'm fine. Okay. Okay. One of the things... Um, to clarify, and Mike can probably do a better job. I think um, if uh, your house is for sale and it's in the, we'll say the current historic district, for example, if we decided to sell our house and it's in the current his historic district, the real estate person, or if there is no real estate person involved, the owner must disclose to the prospective buyer that the house is right. in the historic district. Right. Now, um, the prospective buyer then has the opportunity to ask the questions, okay, what what effect does this have on me? So that's that's kind of how that works. It's it's a, a legal requirement that the that the realtor must disclose that the house is in the historic district. And I can totally, totally respect that, okay? But I was once a first-time home buyer, okay? Um, not in historic district or anything like that. And I was so flipping excited, okay, about my first home. And just by going in and looking at it, I already had 20 things I was going to do, okay, to that house, all right? And had anything been disclosed to me, okay, I would have been no problem. Right. No problem at all. Okay, so yes, you have to disclose the information, but let's let's be realistic. You're a realtor. Mm -hmm. Okay, you're in it for the sale. Uh -uh. Okay. I have a legal. I could lose my license if well, I don't disclose that. No, but you have a, you have a legal obligation to disclose it. Right. Okay, um, but what if what if the homeowner isn't savvy to it? Okay. Do you? How many times do you sit down and have a long conversation? Okay, I do. About it. I do. Oh, okay. Well, th but then I guess. And it's, You're well, the exception. It, it's, it's actually, it goes a little further. Most first-time home buyers think that the 75-year rule applies no matter where their house is in town. So they're not even in the historic district, and they're buying a house that's more than 75 years old. They're going, oh, am I restricted from doing this? What, what can I do with this? Is this going to be a problem? Do I have to go in front of a board? And I explain to them, no, you're not in the district. It's two separate things. And if you are in the district, we have a long conversation about what that means. And it, it may be emphasized by the fact that I sit on this board, but most people that I know in my office understand the historic district and what they have to tell people. And first-time home buyers, you're right, sometimes they don't listen, but I can't, I, I mean, I do what I can to make sure that they understand it. And I, if they're not listening to me, there's not much I can do about it. But, but do, do all realtors. Okay, you're not going to be selling all the houses in... I'm going to try. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but do you know what I'm saying? Do all realtors do that? Uh, good ones do. I, I can't speak for all of them. There's, there's real estate agents out there that don't do a lot of things they're supposed to do, and the fact that they haven't lost their license appalls me, to be honest with you. But the good realtors, and Hopkinton has a very good pool of realtors, know how to disclose that kind of stuff. And if, this, if the district is expanding, then I will, I, I'm going to make it my job to make sure the realtors understand that it's expanding and people need to know about it. Jim Callery, Maple Street. I just want to clarify again the role. I think it got a little muddied. If somebody wants to put up a big behemoth home, that's the zoning board's job, right? Because I'm sure there's setbacks that are going to have to get addressed. This is just, it's got a, the Historic Commission's role is to make sure it looks good from the street. 
Mm-hmm. It can go back a, it can go back a mile, but it's got to look good from the street. Again, that's within zone. <clears throat> that's the zoning board. Yeah. That's not this Correct. committee's mm-hmm. job. So Correct. this committee can't stop the big behemoth home from going up in your neighborhood. It's just got to look good. I also agree. I don't need somebody on the Westboro line telling me I should not be able to put it in a pink door if I want a pink door. But Beth, I wanted to clarify something you said about yeah. center school, and I may have heard you wrong. Right. You said if somebody wanted to put condos in there, and I think the condo, I think there's a cap on condos already in town, I'm not sure. Uh, Again, yeah, if there wasn't, you, they could do it. It would just have to look good from the street. That's the historic, that's this committee's role, not to keep those condos out, right? Correct. Okay, thanks, I just wanted to clarify that. <clears throat> These are all good conversations, and mm-hmm. that's why I think this is our third meeting mm-hmm. like this, and we, we want to hear this kind of stuff, you know, and it's televised. We want other people to hear it, too, and I think um, Hopkins... <laughs> Where did you think we were? <laughs> yeah. Hopkins... <laughs> Sorry. Hopkinton over the last 10 years, has done a very good job of reaching out to the community before they... Uh, started a major project, I consider this a major project, because the first thing that went wrong is when they owned a bunch of land out by Fruit Street and they were going to put a school out there and this and that and what have you, and and people went, well, wait a second, Do you know, now we're going to have the kids in the center of town going to not a great school, you know, an old school, center school, and the kids out there are going to be going to a brand new school. We're going to start dividing the town uh, by economic factors. And so that whole thing fell apart, doing all that out by Fruit Street. And the reason was because there was never an engagement of the community. There were no meetings. It was decided upon. And then this plan was thrown out and it came up at town meeting and people were up in arms. So. They stepped back, formed a committee, lots of input, lots of prominent members of the town on the committee, and we've ended up with Marathon Elementary School, which is, to me, a perfect location for the town, and it includes all the grades uh, of that particular, you know, kindergarten, first, second. So it doesn't divide the town economically, like some kids are going to a new school, some are stuck in an old school. So um, I think Hopkinton's come a long way in engaging the citizens, and we're just part of that right now. And we want to hear from you, and uh, you know, this this plan is not set in stone. It's not even close. Yeah, I mean, that's what I was gonna say. I said this at the last meeting too, I mean, we're not, we're not sitting here saying that we're going to try to jam this down your throats. We, we're asking if you want it. And if the general consensus is we don't want it, we're going to stop. We're, we're, this is not like our mission to expand the district, whether people like it or not. We just wanted to find out <laughs> what percentage liked it, what percentage didn't, what areas liked it, what areas don't. And then we can make an educated decision on what we think we should try to push to town meeting. And to your point, the two-thirds vote to change the zoning from people that don't live in the district bothers me. I I wasn't really clear on that until the last meeting, and it it's been bothering me. And and I think it's I think it's an extremely valid point. And I think if we do go forward, we're gonna have to figure out how to deal with that. And we don't have much option because it's a zoning change, so that's what it requires. But I, I have a hard time with it. Yeah. I think it's state law that all, it, all it votes is. like that go to the it whole is. town. Just like the Legacy Farms, vote. you didn't have to live near Legacy to get to vote on that. The whole town got to vote. Uh, Tom Terry, 17 Maple Street. Um, now, Jeannie Mark went on. <laughs> <laughs> I have got to disagree with her 100% about one thing she said. She came to town. She brought a family up, three of the most beautiful girls you've ever known. She's got a lovely husband, and she is loved by everybody 
that in this town, and I will dare someone to stand up and say something bad about Jeannie Marquardt. I, I like her. Oh, believe me, go on that housewives. <laughs> <laughs> you can't handle the truth. Okay, they don't like me. Yeah, but when they go to bed at night, they know. A <laughs> um, couple of things. I notice we don't have a quorum tonight. The other four members, four members. Oh, can I, they, I can just say, I just got an email from uh, Mary Ann Chambers. She couldn't find the HCAM studio, so. No, that has, so I'm not, that, be that wasn't my point. I wasn't questioning the quorum. Yeah. I just noticed that there, I'm bringing up the point. But the other four members, at the last meeting, there was some uh, talking among people off the microphone that, well, we, we don't necessarily all agree with this. We can always change our mind. Was there a change of heart by, for instance, Melanie Smith or, or uh, Jeanette Thompson, or, or, or they just couldn't make it for another legitimate reason? Have yeah. they turned that they maybe don't want to support this? Because, you know, Beth keeps saying, you're here for us. Well, we're here for you, too. Right. We're here for you to listen. Right. And if you listen to us, and you're here for us, you won't be so hard and fast, sure, that this situation is something should happen. It's obvious that this situation, a uh, gentleman brought it up that the others from uh, Route 85 Grove Street over, that's also the center of town, and there are a whole few houses up in back of there, just like there are on the left of Route 85, or Pleasant Street and that whole area. Uh, it's obvious that if this went through, your next move would be to include that section as plan B. Probably right, isn't that true? I have to say, this has been a pretty stressful and uh, difficult process, so I'm not sure I would be in any hurry to try again uh, anytime <laughs> soon. <laughs> I thought I just heard you say that, one of you. Well, you were well, going to. It could, it could be, but yes. yeah. but it, but it took us twenty years to get there. I know we'd be right. <laughs> right. And uh, you three are all in the in the district, right? So yeah. the district. In the district. I'm in the expansion area, and yeah. Mike, Mike used to live in the district. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, it it just seems that we're trying to create a problem that we don't have. Uh, the gentleman asked for an instance that what, something happened, that they had to step in and correct it. Well, it, it, it doesn't happen. It hasn't happened. The, something about the library steps were changed. Was that before or after construction? After. After. But we well, if you were in existence in, since 1981, why wasn't that caught? In, uh, it, that was in the plan. Weren't those plans presented to you so prior they, to the building yeah, they, of the so they, library? So they didn't match. The final product did not match what they had presented to us and that we had approved. Well, that's different. That's why we changed them just recently. But we worked with them from the beginning of their design and changed several things with them. Did you ask them not to do that and they went and did it? When no, you, they when you, it was supposed to just be a railing. Yeah. And then they built those square brick landing spots for the rails and they didn't ask us to, to comment on it or at to all. make a change and it didn't it didn't yeah. match okay well so we asked them to come back in front of us and and discuss potential options for well the building inspector uh they didn't adhere to the plans the building inspector would have gone and done that too without your without your involvement Possibly. Because if you build something, when you get your final inspection, you have to build it to the specifications of the run the original plan. Right. So that had nothing to do with your expertise. Well, it's actually, it. what happened, and uh, Claire Wright, who used to be on this committee for many years, we were asked when the library was completed, and the architect said, okay, please go over to the library and look it over on the outside. We have nothing to do with the inside. So Claire and I went over. With and a, you took with you the plans that were approved. Took, yeah. took the plans with us. And there were about four things that were not done according to what was approved by this committee. And the front steps uh, on either side 
were of a different material that did not go with the library. They were like these yellow bricks. And uh, Claire was very adamant about either you take this down because it was not approved or what could be a solution. So um, uh, Mr. McIntyre, who was on the Permanent Building Committee, and the architect met with us and we came up with the plan to um, face those steps with granite. And they, they've just about completed it, I think, and it looks pretty good. And so that was a compromise kind of thing, even though the architect did not have permission to build those, you know, initial stair, I don't know what you would call them. Well, so, I mean, it's, it shows that things I can don't want to belabor, belabor this subject. That, that's a minor <laughs> issue. Yeah, okay. The, the well, building that's... inspector should have caught that. If he didn't, someone should have pointed it out to him without any involvement from your group. But it seems that when, this, uh, when Jeannie was talking about, when I didn't fill out the survey because I couldn't. It, the questions were, they were either leading or they went nowhere. Uh, so I didn't bother filling it out. And I talked to three or four other people. They said the same thing. I didn't fill it up. You did get, uh, you sent out surveys to, what, 100 homes probably like that? About every, I mean, everyone on the map. And you got a few back? Well, we have 90 responses. 90? 90. Yeah. And, uh, but so, some people responded because they saw it in the independent and they don't actually live in the district though, so. Okay, and yeah. mo were most of them for it or most of them against it? Where, where was that, where did it's, it stand? So it's really very mixed and um, and we kind of plotted it by area of town yeah, too. They don't live in the district, so why are they here? Okay. They be filling in. Okay, but, so we thought it would be most transparent to let everybody in town know because it will come for town meeting. Oh, did you send those? Did you send those questionnaires out to everyone in town, or just the district? We only physically mailed them to people in the in this proposed in the, expansion in, area. In the district, the, the people in town didn't get them. It was on Hop News, and it was in the Independent, and so. Oh, they, so they did, it did go out town wide. Yeah. Oh, I didn't realize that. So, but are those percentages based on town wide, or are they based on the hundred homes that are in question? So I separated it out both ways. It, so I have a list of the people who live in the district, yes, whether they said yes, no, or not sure. And then I put people who don't live in the district in a separate se section of the chart. Didn't, I, I could be wrong, but didn't you quantify that by some people didn't sign it? So were you, if they didn't, if they didn't sign it, you didn't quantify that by how many people were on the list? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't have their name and address. Were you not including? If I don't have their address, I couldn't include that, them. That's what I thought. Right. So of the 90, they weren't all signed. Correct. So whatever number was, is what you based the chart on. Right. Okay. Right, if somebody doesn't provide their address, That's I can't put it in the list. Yeah. So I, but I, some my point is, I don't really think you're hearing the group. The last meeting you went to, I didn't go to the first meeting, I went to the last one, there were 12 people in the room, mm -hmm. and all 12 were against it, and zero for it. The one before that, I was told when I went in there that there was eight people at the meeting, and there were four for it and four against it. Now tonight, I don't know what the percentage is here. I would sense it's probably 75% against 25-4. Uh, is that a message to you or isn't it? It definitely is, yeah. I mean, so, it is. so it, it, I don't think you should be holding the line so hard and trying to convince we're not, us. Tom, we're not holding we're, the line. We're just getting we're your feedback. Asking, right, we, <laughs> we, 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 we hear this example about condos going in the backyard and this and that. It's, it's, it's frightening what if, they, if we have to, and, and, and the, Somebody from out of state made a comment about something. It's right. But Forbes we, we magazine to, has a comment. But we it. have to go through the three public meetings that we said we were going to do, and then we have to deliver. We haven't talked as a group about this at all. We're, we're listening to you people. Well, we're, and then just we're, trying trying to figure it out. we're just trying to save you some time. <laughs> <laughs> I have lots of time. Yeah. Barbara Burnham, 64 Hayden Rose Street. Um, I'm a little confused. It was my understanding that the surveys were sent to the homeowners in the proposed district. Now I'm hearing and seeing that s people that are not living in the proposed district are weighing in on how they feel about it. Yet you told us that if the people in, in the proposed district are not in favor of it, you're not going to move forward. 
but haven't you already done that by including people that aren't in the district? I mean, you, you basically already put it out there for public discussion to, peop to residents that aren't involved. So the people on so we're bound the Westboro, by open meeting law. We cannot keep anything secret. We have no, to I understand yeah. you can't keep it secret, but it was my understanding that when you spoke last week, and what you've been saying is, if there is an interest in moving forward, you're not going to. Right. You're not going to bring it to town meeting for a two thirds vote. You're not. You, sir, said you weren't in favor <laughs> of someone on the Westboro line deciding what color Jeannie Marquardt's store yeah, is. I, I have a problem with that. Yeah. Um, but hasn't that already been done well, well, by part of, part of the trying to get it out to the to the people in the district we we mailed a copy to everybody that was going to be in, in the potential expansion but you can't we figured out from other town meetings you can't just mail something to a person and they might miss it they you might miss to put it, it they might throw it away it so we yeah. we try to get out there the attempt was to get to all of the people in the district <coughs> And it ends up going to more people because you had to put it in the independent because people in the district seem to read the independent. So we're trying to get it out there to to the people that it affects, but in in as many, a result many ways. we kind of have yeah. to go. Yeah. It goes further out, but but if we're if we're doing the data in such a way that we're pulling those out that aren't in the district and calculating them separately, we're capturing what the people in the district's responses are. We're not, we're not saying we're adding them all into one big statistic and giving you a number that includes people that aren't in the district. We're, we're, we're segregating them out, correct? Right, yeah. I mean, that's, that's what this sheet is. So help me understand exactly how many <coughs> people were mailed surveys. So every property owner in the purple area on the map was in mailed the a in the proposed district Correct. now were residents that are already in the historic just in a historic district were they included in that or they just were not. proposed just proposed. just proposed right and sir you you mentioned that you because it went in the independent or you intended to inform other people by putting it in the independent we wanted to make sure everybody that that is in the potential expansion had several different ways to see that we were looking for the information, not just the mail. Not just the mail, but Correct. the independent. But you can't, you can't put something in the independent and restrict its distribution to just those 100 houses. The independent sends just, just one, one paper out. Right. I, I understand that. OK. okay. Um, thank you for clarifying that. Mm -hmm. On another note, at the last meeting, um, it was said that our property values could be increased anywhere from 4 to 19 percent being in a historic district. Um, I went out and asked different people, some in Hopkinton, some not in Hopkinton, different ages, um, different financial situations, and across the board, everyone said I would not consider buying property in a historic district due to the restrictions that are made for the property owner. So I, I think that the survey or the study that was done saying it would increase our property value and people would want it, I think you need to really relook at that because everyone I spoke with said not a chance. Okay. No one wanted to deal with the historic district. Nothing against you guys, but <laughs> they didn't want the headache in the first place. Thank you. Diane Cambrillis, I live on Ash Street. Um, I want to clarify a couple of things. I think uh, we talked about the new homeowners and you know whether people would purchase the property. I think that, first of all, I just want to say that I appreciate your work and I do believe that you're trying to do something that's, that's best for the town. I think it's quite possible you ended up getting in over your heads. And so I don't think we want to make your exit strategy difficult. We want to make it easy so we're We'll put these, these, um, these facts uh, before you, and then you can, can hopefully make some, some really good decisions about what would be the best next step. Um, one of the things is, uh, you know, a new uh, home buyer, someone who, who bought one of the homes, say, in A or B or C Street or Ash Street or Maple Street, um, some of those, some of the houses are, are not 
you know, they, they're going to require some upkeep. They might not be as expensive. But after they buy that house, if this passes, they don't get as much for what they bought. They don't get as much for it because they're going to have to be jumping through hoops. And if they decide to, to sell their house, they're going to have fewer people wanting to buy it because people are going to want to put their investments else, elsewhere where they don't have these restrictions, where they can get what they want and, and make the changes they want to make on their houses. So I think it's really important that, that you take that into consideration because I really don't think it's fair for them. Think about it, a young family, they have a limited amount of money and they have their starter home that they buy and then they want to make changes and all of a sudden oh, all these dreams they had when they bought the house they can't do. That, that's a sad situation. I, I think that's probably a, a very a likely scenario for many people. Um, secondly, the fact sheet that was sent out, the FAQ, it was not accurate. It, it showed the benefits on one side, but it did not show the detriments on the other side. One example, here's just one, it says, isn't this just another level of bureaucracy? This is again the fact street, and I, I believe it came from the state, mm -hmm. mostly, so a lesson to all of us, we can't always just accept it when it comes, but look through it. The answer isn't, the question was, isn't this just another level of bureaucracy? And the answer was, the first sentence, while it is true that an additional step is needed for some projects, the benefits of protecting the rich architectural heritage found in our town center outweighs this added step. In whose opinion? In whose opinion is it that it outweighs this added step? It, it's not necessarily true, because if you think about the real truth of what it, it will cost a homeowner, that was not mentioned anywhere in the facts, was one, A, that the process will take longer. Okay? Time is money, so it's also more expensive. Secondly, there's no guarantee you're going to get what you want. You bought the house, you have these hopes and dreams, or you want to buy the house. There's no guarantee you're going to get what you want. Okay? And, then, and then, of course, that the renovations are going to be more costly. And that should have been spelled out clearly in the fact. Okay? That's not necessarily true. It depends on what they're trying to do and what materials are available. I mean, we're not going to tell you you have to use a, a, a window that costs 10 times what a normal window costs. I mean, it's not practical. We're but, aware of that. But I, a percentage more, it's always going to be more. It's not likely going to be less, right? It's, it's hard likely. to say that. It depends on what it is. Okay. All right. And that's why I want to work on the design criteria, because then, then we have some guidelines as to you know, really what we're talking about. And, and, you, and we'll be able to potentially even give examples of, you know, we would rather you use this than this, and the price difference is, is negligible. I, I don't know that until we finish that process as well. But I, I, mean, can, I can appreciate what you're saying, but I think that, I mean, it's, if it's any added hassle for any homeowner, it's costly. And it is a hassle. We, we want to do what we want with our houses. We care about our houses. That's why we're here. But the, what I'm trying to get at with the facts is that the fact that there's just this small room of people three times and the other two even smaller, it's because they don't understand the issue. They didn't understand what they received. They didn't understand that being in the historic district means it's red tape for them, it's constraint, there's no guarantee they can do what they want. Someone else can decide for them what they can do with their house. And then again, as, as was stated, whose opinion is, is valued, you know. Right. So, so the other thing, too, is I'm a little concerned that there isn't, the whole committee isn't here because they're, we're here trying to share our thoughts so that you can make a informed decision, which I know you want to do, and I know some of you individually, so I say this all, with all due respect and with gratitude for your volunteers, volunteerism, your time, your heart for Hopkinton, you know, even Amy, I know you've even put your own house in this district, so I know that your heart is sincere. You know, I really, I really do understand that. But I've given this a great deal of thought, and I think this is a, a bad thing for everyone in this district. And the issues that have been raised regarding contention, <coughs> contention between one side of town and the other side of town, that is a tragic thing. That grieves my heart, to see that kind of thing happen. So I would suggest that 
and I like to hear that you, you're talking about just doing nothing, let it, let it die. I've heard some talk about tweaking it and picking it up later. I will recommend, and I don't know if others would, would agree with me, but we don't have to just keep hammering it. You have an, an easy way out. I would recommend that, that you drop it, that you, you, in good faith, considered it, and you gave it your best. We gave it our best. We hammered out the issues. And now we've, we've come very clear to see that it's not really something that, A, this district is in favor of in general, and B, that would be good for the town as far as contention. That would be an unhealthy thing, and I would hate to see that happen. On the other hand, if there are some individuals who want to be included, you might want to make sure they get all the facts first. And then if they want to be included, hey, I would be fine with that. Probably everybody in this room would be fine with that. Thank you so much. Thank you. Just one thing about um, making sure everybody has all the facts and the fact that some of the members aren't here. That's why the last two have been on HCAM primarily. Well, three. All three. All three, yeah. yeah. So the people that can't get here or don't want to come here or whatever can, can hear what you people are saying and what we're saying in response. And, and, and for the board members, I wasn't at one of the meetings because I had a conflict, but I watched it on HCAM later so I could catch up to where what exchanges happened during the meeting. And, and I'm sure the board members that aren't here now will do the same thing. So that was part of the reason for this. Ted Mayor, 56 Hayden Row Street, I'm a townie. I grew up on Hayden Row Street right next to the Marquardon, so not that, that means anything, but... Um, <laughs> it means a lot! Okay. <laughs> what do you think of Gene? <laughs> <laughs> wonderful neighbor, wonderful. Great kids. Um, I, I'd like to first compliment you and, you know, for sitting here and listening to all of us. Because um, I sat on a board years ago, and it takes a lot of patience, and it takes a lot of time, and not very rewarding and people talk at you like as though it's personal t to you when it's not so I want to say that but I've, I've been in a couple of situations where I, I tore down a historic house on Hayden Road Street years ago before there was all this riff, uh, red tape and and today I wouldn't have been able to do that uh, um, so that's part of the reason that I'm against restrictions because I think some people can tear down an old house, and if you grew up in an old house, like I did at 68 Hayden Rose Street, I tore down 56 Hayden Rose Street um, and set it back. But that was no way that would happen today, and I think I did a responsible job, and I think, a lot, I think most of the people who would come into the historic district, um, or the proposed district, would have enough um, wherewithal and desire to do a good job without too much supervision. Um, in fact, I think there's certain cases where houses should be torn down. Um, there may be one at the corner of uh, Church and Maple that's being torn, quasi -torn, right. torn down. Um, and I'm, I'm sure that's probably caught up in the red tape. That house should be just torn down. Um, I know that house. I've been in the house many years, and we, we can all see it from the street. What, but, you know, now, and, and you may note the one or, uh, on Hayden Rose Street, up, one house up from the corner of Maple. So it was where DeVolf put the, the, oh, yeah. the stone, the stone yeah. on the uh, garage. Well, I chatted with them, and, uh, and I nosed around when that was going on. And, and if, if you didn't have deep pockets, you wouldn't be able to accomplish that. So the ordinary person wouldn't be able to come in, because they tore that house down one piece at a time, trying to save the corners, trying to save the front. Total waste of money. But that's all they could do. Um, so I think that's a negative of, of living in the historic district. And, if you're, if you're a certain person you, and you can't wait six months or a year to tear a place down because you're paying interest on the bank, and there's another detriment to it actually improving. Now, that on the, on the corner of Church and Maple, that'll end up being nice, I'm sure, but um, it could be equally nice if they didn't have to tear one piece of it down at a time then pulled up the frontage the way they did on Church Street. Uh, right next to the parish center. I, mean, I don't know if anybody saw that house, the way they had to manipulate that. So that costs a lot of money. And you still get a, you know, a similar product in the end, but so f for those reasons, I think it, it, uh, it slows progress down and people do put up a nice house because uh, you're not gonna spend four, five, six hundred thousand dollars in material to put up a junkie house. But anyway, so that, the point with that, 
Um, one other point that I, and I, so I'm, I'm, you know, voting against, you know, the change. Um, I did hear one point that was brought up that I, that I kind of again, uh, for is, I don't see why the historic district doesn't include the old high school all the way to the corner, including Terry's gas station. Put that on the historic district, um, of, of all things, never mind, you know, Upper Hayden Road Street. You, you can tell you're a townie because you call it Terry's gas station. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I remember when it was series. Uh, anyway, I, I used um, to work there. Did you? Yeah. The other point was, I know why they're doing this, uh, changing these, these laws, is because of the house that's on the corner of Leonard and Grove Street. That must be the reason you're coming around and creep. You don't want people to paint their house blue, because that's one of the ugliest houses I've ever seen. But, um, I the, sold that. Did yeah, you? <laughs> I didn't even think they needed a. Anyway, I don't get it. But, Here's the point that, that, that I think is, is one of the troubling issues for living in the historic district or proposed is they're all, most of them are non-conforming lots. So you go over to the corner of Leonard Street and Grove and, and the ZBA says, oh, non-conforming lot, you can come to make an application with us and you can extend the back of the house over six feet from the street on Leonard Street, which I have in it, have property on Leonard Street. And you know I don't think that's right, but that's not your, Bailiwick, but I think increased density in the in the, in the downtown area because they do, you know, if it conforms and looks the same, then they put on an addition because it's non-conforming, like they did on Grove Street going up on the right. That's you know, that, I mean, I would hate to have a house put right next to my house like that. But so I think that's as, as big a danger of the of the, um, the density. Um, right, but again, that's the, the, all those examples are zoning. I mean, we, That's we, already exactly. If yeah, that was is, in the district, yeah, I'm just, we, I'm just we wouldn't be able raising to an issue do anything this about is going, it. This is going to zoning, and so that's my two cents worth. I'll yeah. hand in my survey, and I'll. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Hi, I'm Carol John, and I'm speaking on behalf of my mother, Sybil Long from 26 Ash Street, and uh, I just want to really thank all of you. You know, we all know this is a volunteer uh, commission. You're giving up your time and energy to do this. And I think for the people that need this guidance, it's wonderful to have it for all of your expertise and also for um, Jeanette, the architect. Uh, you know, it, it's great, but I don't think, I think you should save your energy and your efforts for those people that need it. Also, looking at uh, the bylaws and seeing what the purpose of your commission is, if I could read a little bit of it here, um, it talks about the preservation and protection of the distinctive characteristics of buildings and places significant in the history of Hopkinton or significant for their architecture and the maintenance and improvement of such. Well, where my mom lives on Ash Street, there is nothing significant, historical, you know, architecturally wise, or any other, you know, reason. Nobody famous grew up in any of those houses. Uh, you know, it's, it's not like anything that's gonna be preserved, you know, through the years. Also, you know, you can't just look at a house that's 100 years old and say, oh, we want to preserve this. I mean, a lot of houses that were built 100 years ago or 150 years ago or 75 years ago, they may have, some may have been built by an upstanding builder. Others may have been slapped together. I mean, just because a house is of a certain age doesn't mean you have to preserve it. That's and that's one of the reasons that I think it's great when people buy an older home and, you know, all the ones that I've seen in that area, they've done incredible improvements on them. Aesthetically appealing, beautiful uh, details, I mean, they've really improved them all. They haven't made them worse. So uh, for that reason, we definitely would vote no. And. Even if you wanted to right now, ask the people that are here. See what the majority is. Have people stand. Is, are you in favor or are you not? Here's your opportunity if you'd like to do that. Thank you. So I would like to know, if you have the sheet where we've listed people who have told us 
whether they want their house included or not, and you're not on there, if you could let us, if you could come let us know, that would be really helpful. But I think most of you, I think, either filled out the survey or came to a previous forum, so we did jot down your response. But if we missed someone or we have it wrong, please do. And just one comment on, on your mom's house. Mm -hmm. there, there is a step where you come in within that first 14 days, and if, if the house doesn't have anything that's significantly historic, we can give you a certificate of non-applicability and you're done. It means your house doesn't apply. I mean, you're in the district, but there isn't anything there that we would question or, or want to have a say in, basically. Okay, and Ashley, there was one other point that I wanted to make, so thank you for bringing that mm -hmm. up. I think anyone that is proud of their historic home or if they want a historical designation, they can do that on their own, and they have to. So they can get the recognition for having a historic home if they want to do that. Right. Uh, so, you know, I, I realize that's an additional step, but that option is out there for anyone that wants that designation on give, their home. But it doesn't give them any level of protection. It's just a plaque. Exactly. Exactly. Right. But, but that's what some of the people are looking for. True. So True. they do have that option. Right. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yep. So I want to go back to the, the mailings and such. Oh, Jeannie Marquardt, Tom's best friend. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody's. Um, so I saw a pie chart, okay, um, and I'm just trying to figure out those percentages. Are those inclusive of the... The, yeah, the, the pie chart is inclusive of everybody who filled out the survey. Just the survey? Right. Okay, so it doesn't include the independent or... If they, if they filled it out, if they, if they got the independent and they filled out the paper survey and dropped it at Town Hall or the library, I did include it. Okay. But do you, have, so, do you have the statistics for just the people that are in the district? I could pull it out um, yeah, well, I'm just and do curious. that. I you can know, sort it's an Excel spreadsheet. I, I think, you know, I understand what you have to do to try and get it out to everybody in the district, but in doing so, you put it out there, yeah. you know, like everybody said. And, um, you know, I respect what you do. I, I can totally appreciate your being volunteers and everything like that, but I'm not. A volunteer and I walked the streets okay so uh, again rather than putting surveys in the independent where people who aren't um, affected by this okay maybe you should walk the street okay and and talk to people um, nobody wants to do that nobody has the time to do it I get it okay I did not want to do it okay but I did so it's a valid point. Um, there was something else, but it flew by. Lucky you. <laughs> <laughs> well, a lot of people didn't turn in their Well, that's why. That's why I asked. Right. Yeah. Because nobody people that sign that. Right. Are in the district. Right. Right. I that I think it's valuable information. I didn't return a survey because I thought, you know, I'm like, this is something that I need to talk about because right. I can't answer these questions. Right. I respect uh, Jean's urging to walk the streets, but maybe nobody has to do anything else. I mean, maybe it's kind of a done deal. I mean, and maybe all of our work and all of our heartache is over. I mean, it seems really clear to me. I don't want to be speaking the obvious, but I'm speaking the obvious. And we save us all a lot more work, help us all to get a lot better sleep at night. And if, if you were to decide not to follow through on this idea, if you could add to it that you would also not pick it up again, I think everybody would sleep well. We could pat you on the back for bringing up this topic, because it, it could, be, could have been a very nice thing. I mean, the historic preservation and, and that sort of thing. But in the end, you did the due diligence again. And if there could be some way of saying that it would not be picked up again, I think it would all be for the better. 
Yeah. Thank you. So I think our fourth member did not arrive, so we cannot take any votes unless she, unless she comes. So right, and I don't sorry think we, about that. I don't think we should vote on it tonight anyway. No. I mean, I, I think your point is, is valid for the people that are in the room, but what I would like to see is what's the data when you pull out the people that were from the independent? What's the feedback from here? How many people that are on that aren't on your list or our list didn't get any say at all, and do we have to, is that a significant enough number that we have to find out from them? Well, for this particular group right here, did everyone that's here fill out a survey? All right. So we need to know. So can so I then let, let them, let list. them say yes. Yes. So just yes. a minute, can I just go, it's a very small group, maybe I can just go through the list. So I know Barbara lives at 81 Hayden Row, we have her as a no. The, uh, Shane lives at, on Maple. You want us to put you? Yeah, put it yes. A yes for Shane. Okay. And Mr. Terry is a no on Maple. This is uh, Mark Rodon is a no, and I think she's on the list, right? Um, Mr. Long is a no. Yep. Yep. And but she's on the list, right? Yes. Okay. And you were 56 or 58? 64. 64. Okay. So you're on the list as a no. 64. Okay. And Cheryl is a no, right? Cheryl and Jim is a no. Anybody else? Ted Mayo was a no. Yeah. Oh, that's right. <laughs> but he, he gave us the okay, but we have a documentation. Okay. And the Camarilla Hoskins are a no, and they're on the list yeah, as a no, right? Know. And also 26 Hayden yes. Road Street is no. Which one? 26 Hayden Road Street. 26. Okay. Yes, she's from B Street. She's a yes, but I think Alice I think Carol, we have her. She's yeah. on the list. Yep. My two children are right there, but they're of age to vote. And I, and Leander <laughs> doesn't live in the area. Mm -hmm. yeah. So now we don't have to get on the mic. <laughs> so can I just have some clarification on Barbara Kessler for meeting one? Even though I haven't been to any of the other meetings, what is the culmination of the vote going to achieve? Are you going to make a decision on a majority, or if enough people? You said you're not going to go forward if most people don't want it. Right. So I'm assuming that as of now, you're not going to go forward with it. Or so are you waiting to reach every single person? I don't know. I have to. I, I need to. Right? I need to see well, what. What's your goal? Okay, so can I? I'm I just going to say. Go to clarify. What is this process? What's the end of this process? Is everybody in the district gets a yes or no vote. Well, no, well, no, we, we're never going to get 100 percent of people to reply to something, but you know we'll try. But anyway, so I, I think that we have enough data to make some changes to the recommendations. Like, so one thing is I don't know if you saw on the map that we have four people from A Street and two from Claflin and one from Walcott that all said yes. So I think I pers I can't speak for the whole group because we don't have a quorum. But to me that would be a sign that that area in particular actually feels the, the demolitions and they actually do want to be in the district. So I, I think we should explore that probably further with that area. But if I look at the map of Hayden Row up at the top here and Maple and Grove, it's pretty clear that those people are not interested. And Ash. And, and Ash, right. right. Yeah. So yeah, I want to see where the demographics are. And, and so I, I think we might pursue it further it. with the areas where there was strong support, but not pursue it further um, in, in the areas where there was not strong support. Well, bear, bear in mind the point that we got to come to the mic, though. <laughs> well, they can't hear you on TV. Oh, I thought you said it was over. No. You said the TV was over. Okay. No, we're on TV. <laughs> okay. Um, I forgot my point. Um, just bear in mind when you go to the rest of the people uh, that the, the data that they were presented with does not spell out the whole story about what would be required. I mean, even where we were talking about cost, architectural cost would probably differ. I mean, just doing any sort of renovation, you're going to have to get a specific type of architect, perhaps um, uh, Jeanette or something, uh, because I know she knows historic. That's why she's on this committee. Right. But you can't go to, you can't price out architects. You're going to have this subset. So that, by definition, is going to be more expensive. Lots of things that are, for example, some historic districts if you have an older house and it has a wooden gutter and the gutter rots, you have to replace that wooden gutter. You can't put aluminum gutter. You have to make it wo wooden. I don't think Home Depot even sells wooden gutters, so you have to special order these gutters. By the way, think this through before you vote yes. And, um, you know, these things, people don't really understand it. And the facts certainly was skewed in one, on one side, whether it came from the state or not. 
um, it, it definitely did not spell out the whole other side of the whole issue. So again, to, to be fair to people so that they really know what they're voting on, right. you'd have to spell and, that and out the more the gutter is a good example. That's one of those design things that I think we need to clarify. That's something are, we, are we might going, change in the bylaw. Maybe we don't to, review gutters. Are we going to yeah. hold it to wood, or are we going to hold it to a gutter as a gutter, and as long as it's not you know, lit, lit up with big fluorescent lights, we're going to let it go through? And, and I, I, we have to clarify that before we go anywhere with this, if we go anywhere at all. Then you'd have to clarify it before you go and ask everybody in these other parts of town. Agreed. Because then how can they even answer your question? Agreed. Right? So again, there is a very easy way out but i won't say it again thank you I, I, can i just clarify oh we can't like just say that it will never be taken up again like that we are appointed by the selectmen for three-year terms we'll be gone well you know we won't be doing this forever and we, we cannot promise Beth, what the next Beth year's will. committee will do that's will be doing it forever. amy yeah. tom terry again <laughs> the demographics whether or not the four people in the a b and c street and there were nine people in the maple pleasant street I think that's completely irrelevant because those people are separate people. They live in, they happen to live down there. They wake up in the morning and they vote this way. Whether they live, they could very well live in the other. So you can't cross the dem demographics and, and say that the people in the A, B, and C area probably want to go through just because those four votes were that. No, she, what she said is we need we to pursue do it some further, more. talk to them if, more. If there's yeah. a specific area that shows interest, we need to expand the conversation to that specific well, that area would be a, instead of everybody else. Yeah. Right. You, you we'll should, that maybe you should else. visit them door to door like uh, like Jeannie did. It's it's, mm -hmm. it's a valid. That would be a that would be a good. true way of getting what yeah. you want. Okay, now we have to use the mic. So. <laughs> okay. Um, sorry, I'm just trying to get some points of clarification. Um, so if something isn't deemed to be historical, like um, your grandmother's house. We can, you can wash your hands. What determines whether you can wash your hands and get this certificate of dispensation from being part of the district? So is it, if it's not age, you, no, is it a certain... The, you're still in the district, but, but if you, you don't bring have a project to comply to anything. Of, you have to apply, but if the, if the project has nothing, if the house isn't historically significant, or there isn't any architecture on the house that's historic, historically significant, that project can go through with just a, a, a quick uh, meeting. A certificate of non-applicable. Non certificate of non But you still have to go through the steps of having the a first meeting. Step. If yeah, a house the, is in the, the district, first, they still the have to step. go to the first, mm -hmm. through the so first step. So it's a 14-day maximum. But you determine that age is not the criteria. Not so just the fact that a house is 150 years old doesn't mean it's going to have historical there's significance. Pretty good, there's a pretty good chance it, it, it's more historically significant than a So that's so confusing. I live in an 1898 house or something. It's covered with aluminum siding. That ship has sailed. Right. We, we can always have aluminum siding now, right? Forever and ever. Right. Yes. You, could, you can yes. pretty much always replace like with like. Like if you already have aluminum siding. Right. You so okay. So what would be historical? Just humor me because I'm sorry I missed the other meeting. So what would we If you had significantly comply? detailed corner like, Boards trim or, or you know, aluminum, yeah. aluminum, aluminum. Right. So in your situation, you've already somebody gone. Somebody went past what we would have any say in in the first place. Mm -hmm. So even though you're in the district and you may have to come to us, okay. if you're if you're replacing like for like, I don't even think you have to apply. No, I think it depends on what what it is. But you yeah. may have to come to us for one meeting. Mm -hmm. Final, right, right. We are, we have begun already. Right, but if you if you're vinyl. replacing aluminum with vinyl, mm -hmm. you're already past mm -hmm. all all hope for right. historical <laughs> purity. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I think that's clarifying. Thank you very much. Just one more quick question. So when you're talking about an architect, okay, and I know Jean sits on this board and everything, uh, do we have to pay for the architect for Jeanette? For for any architect, you or know, is that so, or is that provided? So we have to have an architect on our board, which is a volunteer right. who usually lives in Hopkinton, so and that's no, no charge. I want to change the, the front of my house, right. okay? And I have a beautiful plan, okay? And I have a friend who drew it all up for me, and everything like that. Do I then no. have to have someone else draw it up? No, no you no. don't have to bring an architect. It, no, sometimes no. it makes sense because you've already hired the architect. 
to design whatever addition you're doing or whatever change you're doing. But if you didn't, you can come as a as you a can homeowner. just come your ho as a homeowner or the contractor could come depending mm -hmm. on the okay. So situation. I don't I don't have to no no okay perfect. Hi, Daniel Haskins, Ash Street, twenty one Ash Street. Uh, again, I also want to say thank you for your time and you know so much you put into it and putting up with with us. Um, so I just want to say that I like history and I appreciate historic aspects of Hop Hopkinton. And, um, but I have to say that I don't like all periods of history aesthetically equally. I think that certain uh, periods of history created a lot of beautiful homes. Other periods created very unattractive homes. The 70s. Sorry? The 70s. <laughs> like shag carpets and paneling. Yes. You don't like that. Understood. So the same on the exterior of the home. Um, I feel strongly about that. Problem is that if this goes forward, I don't get to make my own decision anymore. I'm restricted to this, the, the, uh, the board's discretion on the period in which that home happened to be built. Uh, I've owned a home where it was built in one period after a style of a different period. And I didn't necessarily like either one. Um, you know, I like pillars and archways and columns and, you know, colonial stuff. But a lot of stuff, I just don't even want to look at it. So the problem with this proceeding is that that decision is taken out of my hands. My creativity is, and my, Well, yeah. just one minor point. I mean, we, we don't have a lot of people that <coughs> appeal any decisions that are rendered here because we try to work with the person to come up with a solution that everybody is comfortable with. So, I mean, if we were just saying, no, 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 you have to do it this way, this way, this way, we'd be getting appealed all over the place. And right. we try really hard to work within what you're trying to do and just make sure that it's, it fits. So a lot of these streets in Hopkinton have a wide variety of, yes. of styles and from different historical periods. Right. And I like some of those periods and I don't like others of those periods. If I own a home or buy a home with a style that I think is unattractive or somewhat unattractive, I want to be able to adjust that to something that I think is attractive. And this is kind of the problem with now surrendering my home to these sort of principles and regulations that my hands are tied. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Thank you. But to his point, too, it, it, it goes to uh, who gets to decide, all right? And we'll, we'll use the pink door, okay? If George Washington lived in my house, okay, when it was first built and everything like that, if they had hot pink paint, maybe he would have painted my front door hot pink, okay? Who's to decide, all right, that it's not... Hot pink is enough historical value, all right? And seriously, mm -hmm. I'm not going to paint my door hot pink. Just, just so you know. But bright well, red. Tom Terry won't let you. <laughs> okay, so I think I think we can close the forum. Everybody who wanted to speak spoke. Okay, so thank you all for coming. Please email or thank you. if you if you want to. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.